Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, you woke up another day. You're listening to this. God's given you another day. Another day to glorify His name. Praise His name and thank Him for all His goodness. I think if we would make a practice of doing that more, we would find ourselves lifted out of the troubles. We'd be lifted on high, sitting in the heavenlies with our Father, and we would look at things in a different perspective. And besides that, the word says that giving thanks is His will. That's part of His will. Giving thanks. Hallelujah. This devotional today is called The All of Belief by Charles Spurgeon. Now this is a subject that really needs to be talked about because so much of the time there is unbelief instead of belief. There is not believing God in His promises instead of believing His promises and trusting Him wholly that He will do what He says even though we don't see it. And when we get into unbelief and don't believe God, we just need to repent. We just need to get on our knees and repent before God. Tell Him we're sorry. This devotional is really kind of a Watash kind of devotional. Upside the head kind of thing. Because it's going to reprove a lot of us for this very thing, unbelief. You know, in um, Mark, I want to read some of this in Mark chapter 9. Because I haven't really seen it like this until I was studying this out this morning. Mark 9 23 is actually the verse. But we're going to go a little further up. Now this man brought his son unto Jesus that was affected by his spirit. And he says, yeah, this spirit Makes him fall to the ground and wallowing, foaming at the mouth. Sometimes tries to throw him into the fire, whatever. In Mark 9, 21. And this is Jesus speaking. And he asked his father, how long is, is it ago since this came unto him? Talking about the spirit in the boy. And he said, of a child, verse 22, And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. Now listen to this part right here. This really struck me. But the man said, he's talking to Jesus. But if thou canst do anything. <sighs> what is that right there? But if thou canst do anything. This guy was talking to Jesus. That was wanting his son helped by Jesus. And he said, but if thou canst do anything. So what is that? It's doubt. Right off the bat, doubt. Doubt coming out of this mouth. To Jesus. Basically, if you can, if you can help him. <laughs> but if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. 
This is the man speaking to Jesus. In Mark 9.23, Jesus said unto him, <laughs> Jesus kind of gave it back to him in this verse here. He said, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. So here was the man telling Jesus, If thou canst do anything, and here Jesus is saying to him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. In verse 24, And straightway the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And then, of course, Jesus rebuked that foul spirit identified it as a dumb and deaf spirit and commanded it to come out and to no more enter into that boy. Now, let's look at this right here. Unbelief will bind the hands, really, of our God, basically. I mean, he can do anything he wants to do. He doesn't need us for anything. But unbelief just blocks up the deal altogether. And, and right here, he's saying that to this man. Because <laughs> here the man comes to Jesus, not full of faith. And I know you can. I know, you know, like the centurion. I know I don't. you don't even have to come to my house. You know, just speak the word and it'll be done. And boom, it was done, wasn't it? <laughs> what did Jesus marveled? I have not seen basically this belief. But the centurion believed. No, you don't even have to come. I don't even have to see you come to my house or this or that. I just know that if you speak the word, it'll happen. Well, there was a difference between that guy and this guy. Because he started out with doubt. He comes to Jesus with doubt. If thou canst do anything, he says to Jesus... And Jesus says it right back to him. Well, if thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. You see the concept here? This really struck me today when I was doing this study. This is something we really need to get. Okay, Mark 9.23, Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, Basically, if you can have faith, if you can put your trust in me, all things are possible. All things are capable and powerful and strong, and they're possible to be done to him that believeth. To him that has faith and entrust to me. This is a crucial verse right here for our lives as believers. I want to read Gail's commentary because as always it's really very good. It goes into depth about it. This verse in Mark 9 23 Jesus said unto him if thou canst believe as the man put an if in the previous verse, on the power of Christ. So he put an if. If you can do anything for my boy. So he put an if on the power of Christ. So then Christ puts an if on the faith of the man. And tactily suggest that power was not wanting in himself. The power was not wanting in Jesus. He had the power. But Jesus was pointing out the faith of this man. 
And should that cure not be performed, it would not be to the owing to any inability in Jesus, but to his own incredulity. That's a word, isn't it? You know what that means? It means the state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. Now, we're not talking about this faith movement that name it and claim it deal, okay? We're, we are talking about the Word of God. I just read you what Jesus said in Mark, okay? If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Well, if we are constantly letting unbelief flow out of our mouth and reinforcing it with the words going out into the atmosphere, the cosmos, then what are we going to get back? Jesus' words do not return unto him void. Well, what do we think the words that we speak out in unbelief are going to do? What return is that going to bring to us? This is something, boy, we just really need to think about and repent of unbelief. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, as the man put an if on the power of Christ, Christ puts an if on the faith of the man. And tactily suggest that power was not wanting in himself, in Jesus, but faith in him, in the man. And should that cure not be performed, it would not be owing to any inability in Jesus, but to his own incredulity. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm going to read that definition of that word again. The state of being unwilling or unable to believe something. What is this thy saying, if thou canst do anything? Which is what the guy said to Jesus. What dost thou mean by it? Now here's a rebuke. Thou oughtest not to doubt of my power, of Jesus' power. We are not to doubt of Jesus' power to deliver, to heal, or any other thing. There is no reason for it to doubt. After so many miracles wrought, He was upbraiding the man with his unbelief. Because thou sayest, if thou canst. Well, what does that sound like? What the devil always do? He's always there with the if, isn't he? Did God say, if you are the Son of God? All things are possible. To him that believeth. That is. All things are possible to be done to him. For all things are not possible to be done by the believer himself. But all things are possible to be done for him by God. Thus our Lord as he ascribes to that to faith which is done by a divine power. You see that? Faith is crucial. Belief is crucial. This devotional, the all of belief. Our unbelief is the greatest hindrance in our way. I'm going to read that again. Our unbelief is the greatest hindrance in our way. 
In fact, there is no other real difficulty as to our spiritual progress and prosperity. I'm going to read the definition of unbelief, okay? The state or quality of not believing the absence of faith. The Lord can do everything. The Lord can do everything. But when he makes a rule that according to our faith, so shall it be unto us. And he said this in the scripture. According to your faith, let it be done unto you. He mentioned this to certain people. The word is our example. Okay. The Lord can do everything everything but when he makes a rule that according to our faith so shall it be unto us our unbelief ties the hands of his omnipotence now why would that be why would it tie the hands of the almighty God that created heaven and earth and can do whatever he wants to do what did he say when he was walking the earth? I could do. I could not do certain things here in this place. Basically is what he said. And why? Because of unbelief. He had the power to do everything inside of him. But the unbelief was blocking. He said it himself when he walked the earth. And it's the same today. Let's read the definition of faith. Complete trust and confidence in God. Okay, let's ask ourselves the question. Do we have complete trust and confidence in God? You know what? By what we speak, we're gonna it's gonna be the telltale sign if we have complete trust and confidence in God. We need to be aware what we speak out. And once again we need to repent if we're not trusting and having confidence in God. Because there's no reason for us not to. Not one time has he ever failed. Not one time has he ever failed to fulfill the promises of his word. Not one time. We have no reason not to believe him and not to trust him and not to have confidence in him. Men and women can be liars, but God is not a liar. And he does what he says he will do. And always has. From the beginning of time. Now listen to this. I want you to listen close to this. Yes. The confederacies of evil. Shall be scattered. If we can but believe. Despise truth. Shall lift its head. If we will but have confidence. Confidence. In the God of truth. We can bear our load of trouble. Or pass uninjured through the waves of distress. If we can gird our loins. With the girdle of peace. That girdle. Which is buckled on by the hands of trust. Trust in God. Okay. The definition of trust. The firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, or strength of someone or something. Firm belief in the reliability. God's always reliable, He's always truthful. 
He's always there with strength that he has promised in his word for us. Okay, what's the definition of rest? If you look at the word trust, there's another word in there, and that's the word rest. R-U-S-T. The definition of that, it's like a corroding. Something corrodes, it just starts getting ate away, doesn't it? Gets holes in it. And it could also be a fungal disease on plants, too. And I thought about this, and I thought, wow, you know, that can literally happen to us spiritually. Just get like a fungal disease spiritually, a corroding process going on because we don't trust God. And when you get a fungal disease of some kind, you start, you don't feel good. You get sick. You feel sick. Pulled down. This is really something we have just got to look at and, and really be truthful with ourselves. What can we not believe? Is everything possible except believing in God? <sighs> Yet he is always true. Why do we not believe in him? He is always faithful to his word. Why can we not trust him? Here it is, right here. Whether we want to admit it or not, here it is, right here. When we are in a right state of heart, faith costs no effort. It is then as natural for us to rely upon God as for a child to trust his father. When we are in a right state of heart. This is really a major reproof for all of us today. The worst of it is that we can believe God about everything except the present pressing trial. This is folly. Come, my soul. Shake off such sinfulness. And you say, sinfulness? Yes, sinfulness. Yes, it's sinfulness. <laughs> and trust thy God with the load, the labor, the longing of this present. This done, all is done. Yes, it's a sin not to trust God. Yes, unbelief is a sin. To not trust, to not believe God is a sin. It's sinning. So we need to repent when we do that. So today, let's take an inventory here. And if we've been doing these things, let's repent. For doing these things. And get on the right path of belief. We have no reason not to believe God. No reason at all. We have no reason to doubt him in any way. Let's have the faith of the centurion. He had such belief. He said, just speak the word. You don't have to come to my house. You don't have to show up with any kind of whatever. Just speak the word, Jesus, and I know it'll happen. Let's believe God today. He is worthy of our belief and our trust. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this little 
devotional. I thank you for planting the seed of it deep, letting the roots go down deep and the fruit to burst forth upward, Lord, and bring much bountiful harvest. I pray you will not let the enemy steal the seed of this little message, and you will not let people that have heard it forget it. In Jesus' name, amen.